Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse, and we have today Dr. Brownstein, who is one of the leading experts in optimizing your health. He's a holistic family medical practitioner. He is the author of many books on health, but two of them that I have read are Iodine, Why You Need It, Why You Can't Live Without It, and Salt Your Way to Health. Two subjects on two focuses we would not normally think about. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Brownstein to its rainmaking time to discuss optimizing our health regarding iodine and salt and other things that are on his mind and heart today. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. You just got back from London. What are you doing in London? I was giving a lecture on those same topics in London to a group of holistic doctors. So you actually teach or coach doctors as well? I do. Those that want to be coached. <laughs> Are doctors coachable? With them. <laughs> a few. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Talk a little bit about the recent discoveries with iodine. This was such a revelation, and I really think everybody needs to have these two books in particular. I know you've done one on thyroid and probably many more coming. But talk about what you've discovered and your work with Dr. Abrams or your understanding of the iodine discoveries. Well, iodine... Has was discovered in the early 19th century, and in in the 19th century, it was recommended for almost any condition. And in fact, it was the most recommended medical item at its time. And primarily, it was being used for infections. Iodine is an anti-infective agent. There's no bacteria, virus, parasite, fungus, yeast organism that's ever been shown to be resistant to iodine, and it, it, it used to get a lot, a lot of wide press until the early 20th century when patent medicine took hold. And when that happened, iodine being an unpatentable substance and not uh, costing a lot of money and the profit margin wasn't there, it sort of lost its focus in medicine. And um, so that's kind of the quick history of iodine. And as of late, we've sort of resurrected the use of iodine for treating all these infective disorders and Iodine's also been found to concentrate in the glandular tissue of the body, including the breasts, the ovaries, the uterus, the prostate, and it it helps tissues prevent it prevents tissues from becoming cancerous, including breast cancer, and prostate cancer, and ovarian and uterine and thyroid cancer, and it just has such a wide range of properties in the body. It, it's in in my estimation, it's it's the the most important nutrient that you can add to your your supplement regimen. And yet, very few people actually take it and take enough. Explain about that, the amount you take, what you take. Well, we've all been conditioned that there's enough iodine in salt and that uh, we don't need any more iodine than what's already added to salt. And if you, we've also all been conditioned, that includes doctors and lay people, that if you take iodine and you have a thyroid problem, you're going to make a thyroid problem worse. And if you don't have a thyroid problem when you take iodine, you could precipitate a thyroid problem. All those are false, and um, uh, I call that the falsity of conclusions about iodine. And it's iodine deficiency that's driving the thyroid illness epidemic that's out there. It's iodine deficiency that's driving the breast cancer epidemic that's out there. I believe it's iodine deficiency driving the prostate problem epidemic that's out there. And um, again, I think that people need to take a really good look at iodine and iodine in their diet and consider supplementing with iodine, particularly in this uh, environment, this Western environment that we live in with all these chemicals we're exposed to, which cause our body to, to, to not bind to iodine. Talk about the role of bromine. You write a lot about what bromine is as a chemical, but I think the public, we need to understand what we're taking in every day and why we need iodine desperately. Well, mankind developed over the centuries um, needing iodine. Iodine's an essential element. We can't live in our body. We can't live without iodine. You can't make any hormones without iodine. You can't, your white blood cells can't function without iodine. Um, so, We've, we've functioned in environments as humans. We function in environments where there's not too much iodine and, and, and humans can be relatively deficient in iodine and still survive to a point. And we've also functioned in environments where iodine levels have been sufficient. 
But what's happened as of late is our exposure to chemicals such as fluoride and bromine, uh, that, and these are chemicals that bind to iodine receptors and cause our body to release iodine if we're exposed to too much of these items. These chemicals cause us to become very iodine deficient, and those, the amounts of exposure to these chemicals has increased radically over the last 20 years. What is bromine in, for example? Bromine is a halide. It's in the same family of iodine as iodine in the periodic table. And bromine is found in many consumer items such as uh, iPods and uh, computers and cars. And it's also found in furniture as mattresses and curtains and carpet as a fire retardant. Um, I, uh, bromine is also found in food and drink as brominated vegetable oil. Some Mountain Dews have bromine in it. Um, AMP Energy Drink has bromine in it. Um, some Gatorade products have bromine in it. Um, most of our bread products have bromine in it because we use brominated uh, flour in the United States. And this bromine excess is causing our bodies to be iodine deficient. And the number one toxicity that I see in my patients by far is bromine. And there's a way to test for it? There is a way to test for it. You can do... Uh, urine, urinary levels, and I have a lab in my office where I've been testing people for years, and so far every single patient that I've tested for bromine has tested too high. Um, and um, some people have tested higher than others, but every single patient has tested for, for bromine toxicity. And um, the higher the bromine levels are, the lower the iodine levels are, and there's a direct correlation between bromine levels and illness. Generally, the sicker someone is, the higher their bromine levels are, and the lower their iodine levels are. That relationship also translated into a major study. Was it like a 20- or 30-year study where they found out that Japanese women were not getting the same level or magnitude of breast cancer that we were in the United States? They've shown for, for many decades that... Japanese women get breast cancer at a markedly lower rate than U.S. women. And when Japanese women move to the U.S., their breast cancer rates start to come up to more of a Western level. The same is true for Japanese men and prostate cancer. On the mainland Japanese island, uh, their, their levels of prostate cancer are much lower than they are here. And when the men move to the United States, their levels of prostate cancer start going up. Iodine deficiency and perhaps bromine toxicity could explain that correlation. That's interesting. What about if someone said, look, we've been told by people to take kelp directly versus iodine. What do you say to that, and how does it translate? Will kelp act similarly? Well, I think kelp can be a good source of dietary iodine if the kelp is grown in a clean area of the ocean. However, if the kelp is exposed to toxins like bromine or fluoride, the kelp can take up those items and not contain iodine. So it kind of depends on where you get the kelp from. The only other issue to think about with kelp is the longer it's been out of the ocean, the more the iodine that sublimates or becomes uh, into a gaseous state and goes away from the kelp. Um, so the iodine levels are very variable in kelp. The work of Dr. Abraham, who is apparently uh, also another wonderful leader in this area who's done a lot of research, he's the one who came up with the iodoral iodine. Talk about your experience of that. I would like to know, because obviously you're seeing a lot of patients, and this iodine test that's available that can be done inexpensively. Um, the way you can test iodine is called an iodine loading test, and my friend and colleague, Dr. Guy Abraham, developed that test. And what it is, it's a 24-hour urine test to measure how much iodine comes out of you and how much is retained after you ingest a known amount of iodine. And we can we can gather a lot of information from that test and, and determine how deficient your body really is with iodine, um, depending on those numbers on the test. And Dr. Abraham has also developed an iodine pill called Iodorol that's a combination of potassium iodide and iodine. And I find the pill very useful and very helpful for people, and we use it a lot in our practice. 